Today I wish to talk of another of the many things that happen when one comes to Christ. In our last broadcast, we spoke of forgiveness and justification. Every believer is forgiven of all his sins. And also everyone who comes to Christ is justified, that is, cleared from every charge of guilt, and put in Christ in a new position, just as if he had never sinned. Now, along with these blessings and all the others we have spoken of in the previous messages, we have the truth of sanctification. In writing to the Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 11, we read, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, just what is sanctification? Very simply, it means to be set apart to God. Because of sin, man has been away from God, identified with a sinful world and under the judgment of God and in the kingdom of darkness. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 10, God brings before us truth relative to this blessing of sanctification. Oh, how good of our God to desire a sinful man should be set apart to himself. And he himself undertook to bring this about. As we read in Hebrews 10, 1 to 4, the law with its animal sacrifices could never take away sin which separates man from God. In God's eternal counsel, the Son of God was appointed to be the means of sanctification. In Hebrews 10, 5, we learn, now quote, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, that is Christ, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, that is the Son of God, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Then in verse 9 he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Then the Spirit of God, through the writer, Paul, tells us, and I quote, he taketh away the first, that is, the first covenant of law, that he may establish the second, that is, the covenant of grace. Now then, in verse 10 we read that it is by the will of God we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It is God's will that he have a people set apart to himself in holy relationship and fellowship. By the works of the law, man was not only proven to be hopelessly helpless to achieve this, but the covenant of the law broke down because of man's utter failure to keep the law and the impossibility of the blood of bulls and goats to take away man's sin. God then, to fulfill his will, made a covenant of grace, a covenant dependent only on God's carrying out his promise acting according to his own will on the principle of grace. Ah, this meant the sending of his Son to do the Father's will. And the Son of God willingly, lovingly came. He gave himself as the offering that alone could take away sin and remove thus the distance between man and God and set the believing sinner apart to God. As 1 Peter 3.18 tells us, He suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. The offering of himself on the cross was of infinite value, and the one offering of himself was sufficient to settle the whole question of sin once for all. And the work he did was finished to the satisfaction of a holy God. And the believer, the one who comes to Christ, is thus set apart to God, that is, sanctified, by the offering of Christ once for all. In contrast to the priests of Israel's day who stood day after day offering the same sacrifices which could never take away sin, we read that this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in flesh, offered one sacrifice, and after he offered that sacrifice of himself on the cross of Calvary, he sat down forever or in perpetuity 
at the right hand of God. Hebrews 10, 11, and 12. Never will he need to repeat the work of redemption. He cried on the cross, It is finished. And after his resurrection and ascension, he sat himself down because the work to sanctify, to set apart sinners to himself, was done. Now he has been seated at the right hand of God in heaven for nearly 2,000 years. He is waiting in grace for men to come to him. But remember this, if men will not be sanctified by his offering and find him to be their savior and sanctifier, they will be made his footstool in judgment, for they are enemies of him and of his grace. But what a blessing this sanctification is for those who come to Christ. In verse 14 of chapter 10, we read, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Set apart to God once for all, verse 10, and forever, verse 14. His work, my friend, is perfect. And the one who comes to Christ stands before God in all the perfection of that work. And the setting apart to God the sanctification is forever. Now, how we get this blessing is the same way in which we are blessed by being born again, forgiven, justified, and receive the Spirit. In Acts 26, 18, we read Paul recounting his commission from the Lord. Turn to it, please. Acts 26, 16 to 19. And I'll read those verses. The Lord Jesus said to him, Rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Notice, please, how one is sanctified, set apart to God, to be partaker of the inheritance. It could not be plainer. It is simply, and I quote, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Acts 26.18 this is not a blessing received apart from salvation and forgiveness and justification and new birth. No, nor is it what is too commonly and erroneously taught to be a so-called second blessing which is supposed to get rid of the old sinful nature. No, this is not the sanctification of the Bible. This is contrary to the truth of the Bible and has absolutely no scriptural backing. Sanctification is not some additional experience, but one of the blessings we all receive, along with being saved, receiving eternal life and the gift of the Spirit. It occurs, as Jesus says in Acts 26, 18, when one puts his faith in him, sanctified by faith that is in me. And to repeat the truths of Hebrews 10, 10 and 14, this sanctification by the offering of Jesus' body on the cross is a work done for us once for all and forever. That's the teaching of the Word of God. Sanctification puts us into a new position. In Colossians 1.13, the truth of what it does is revealed in these words, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son? That is, the believer is set apart from the power of darkness to God in the kingdom of his dear Son. In 1 Corinthians 1, 2, we read, too, that those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, that is, set apart to God in Christ, are called saints. Now, this is true of everyone who comes to Christ. He is a saint by calling in Christ. He's set apart for holy priestly service. Paul, in writing to the Romans, chapter 1, verse 7, addresses his letter to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called saints, or saints by divine calling. This, in effect, implies 
the most intimate identification with Christ. And such indeed are his brethren, such as we become. He that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, we learn in Hebrews 2.11, for which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. And the sanctified are perfected forever by the one offering that we have already spoken of in Hebrews 10.14. This sanctification, my friend, never changes, and there is no progress in it, for it is perfect already in Christ. But it may be well to speak of the practical side of sanctification, which is progressive. Being here in the world, we have a life to live to the glory of God and in victory over the world, the flesh, the old nature, and the devil. What we are in Christ, sanctified and called saints, is to be practically manifested in our daily lives. It is for this that Jesus prayed to his Father in John 17. Turn to it, please. John 17, and I read from verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now notice, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You see, God has given us his word and his spirit. It is that word wherein we find instruction for our path as Christians. If we take heed to that word, we shall be kept from going along with the world. The word hidden in our hearts will enable us to keep from sinning. Obedience to the word will keep us in separation from the world system and preserve us from making unequal yokes with unbelievers. With the word dwelling in us, we shall overcome the world and by the sword of the Spirit defeat the temptations of the devil. It is the Lord who undertakes this service to keep his own practically set apart to himself. We read in Ephesians 5, 25 and 26, Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And everyone who comes to Christ is a member of his church. And then we read, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now this is what will keep the believer walking in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And the Holy Spirit is the divine power to direct us to the word and make it effectual in our living. Positionally, then, everyone who comes to Christ is sanctified by the blood, the work of Christ set apart to God once for all and forever. Practically, those who are sanctified by faith in him are set apart from the world and its ways, and the flesh and its desires, from Satan and his deceits, by taking heed to the word. For this Jesus prays, as we saw in John 17. And this he labors for as we read in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, that the very God of peace sanctify you, set you apart, holy. And Paul adds, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now surely this is what we who are Christians can well pray for, for each other. It is important that our lives lived in the world correspond to the position we have of being perfectly sanctified or set apart to God in Christ forever. Remember, if we walk in the Spirit, we shall not fulfill the works of the flesh. And to walk in the Spirit is to walk according to the Word of God. Well, though this about practical sanctification is a matter of growth in the Christian life, I've felt led to speak of it and seek to show the difference between positional sanctification by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ and his shed blood happening the moment that one comes to Christ and is perfectly and eternally set apart to God by that work on the cross and to show the difference with that from the practical 
sanctification that is expected of the believer as long as he's in the world. This measure of separation will vary according to our communion with God over his word and independence upon him in prayer to live out in the world what we are in Christ by the power of the indwelling spirit. In closing, I would like to speak of this practical sanctification in relation to our testimony for Christ with others in these last difficult days of departure from the truth. In 2 Timothy 2.19, we're exhorted, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That is, separate oneself from it. And iniquity is anything contrary to the word of God. Then in verse 20, the apostle compares Christendom to a great house with a mixture of vessels who represent people. In this house are vessels of gold and silver, also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. In other words, some saved and some not saved. Now the instruction is given in verse 21, if a man will purge himself from these, that is this mixture, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified, a vessel set apart from the mixture by separating himself from them, he thus will become a third class in the house of profession. And it will be one who is saved but set apart to God for righteousness' sake. And he will be meet for the Master's use. He will be prepared unto every good work. You see, only a separated Christian can be prepared unto every good work to be able to proclaim every truth of God. This, then, is a sanctification from association with defiling influences. And also we are told to follow righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, a pure heart is one that is single in its desire and purpose to please the Lord and to be in a set-apart condition from what is contrary to his word and to be ready for him to use. Well, as I began today, I did not know just what the Lord might desire to bring out in this broadcast, but I do pray, however, that some light has been shed on the truths of positional and practical sanctification. Now, if the Lord wills, there are a couple of more things which happen when one comes to Christ that I desire to speak of in our next broadcast.